Previously on Cat Leapin's Art. I hold a very special place in my heart for toys. So when Martian Toys reached out to me to ask if I wanted to put my art on a bunch of their totally wicked designer toys for a gallery art show, I jumped at the chance. So Martian shipped a box full of toys to my studio for me to begin painting, sculpting, and customizing them in any crazy way that I can come up with. And once they're all done, I'll ship them back to Philly to be part of a group show of fellow Chicago artists at their Mothership Toy Gallery. Now, I just have to figure out exactly what it is that I'm gonna do with all these little guys. And fast. Now, I really wanna put my personal touch on these next two toys, and what better way to do that than to sculpt on the vinyl base. Doing this is really gonna change the look and feel of the toy and make it totally unique. Super duper limited edition. One of one. Now, given the fact that these toys are made of vinyl and are already painted, I'm a little nervous about using polymer clay like I have in the past. It needs to be baked in order to harden and I would really hate to melt these little cuties. So I had to find a clay that would bond to vinyl and harden at room temperature. After hours of intense research, I stumbled upon The Craftsman. If you haven't checked out his channel, you need to. He's a bomb teacher, super creative, and absolutely hilarious. That's how we're looking so far. Oh, hello. Anywho, he taught me all about epoxy sculpt, and it turns out this stuff is pretty wild. It's sold in two parts, part A and part B, and they need to be combined in equal amounts in order to start a chemical reaction that causes the clay to fully cure in approximately two hours, give or take. Now two hours of work time really ends up not being a lot. So make sure you don't mix too much of this stuff up. If you do, there's a good chance that it'll harden before you even get to use it. So just mix a little bit at a time to reduce your accidental waste. Per the product safety instructions, we're gonna be wearing gloves and a respirator mask. We're also gonna be using Aves safety solvent, water, a silicone mat so that we keep our work surface clean, and we're gonna be using silicone or metal tools because this clay loves to stick to wood. Let's go prime and prep these toys so that they're ready to paint. Today, we're gonna to be priming everything bright white. That means we're gonna have a nice, clean, blank slate as a starting point. This is also going to help to make sure that the previous paint that was on the toy doesn't show through our new layers of paint that we're gonna be adding. Now, all there is left to say is that it's prime time!
like to give my primer a good healthy amount of time to dry before I start applying any of my fluorescent paint. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight before slapping down any of those bright acrylic paints that I like to use. <laughs> All right, the toys are all primed and looking great, but we need to do one last thing before we start painting. We need to brush on a layer of matte medium. Now matte medium is super easy to use. It's clear, you just brush it on your piece, wait for it to dry, and your paint is gonna stick like a dream come true. That medium is dried, and now it's time to start painting our toys. Now let's pull this together with some crispy black outlines. All right, the toys are all painted, and now we get to move on to my favorite part, the ooey, gooey, drool-inducing epoxy pour. 
But before we get to the pour, we have a little prep work to do. First, we're gonna start by propping up our toys so that the epoxy can run off and not stick the toy to the surface that it's sitting on. And as always, it's safety first. I recommend wearing gloves and a respirator mask, especially if you are allergic to epoxy resin and its fumes. We're gonna be using Maker Epoxy, a two-part epoxy resin from Total Boat. Part A is the resin part of the mix and part B is the hardener. Gently stir the two parts together and get ready for that oh so satisfying epoxy pour. time might vary depending upon the temperature of the space that you're working in. So go ahead and look at the label on the Maker Epoxy to make sure that you're allowing for the proper amount of cure time before handling your project. Two days later, and I think these guys are looking like they've fully cured. At this point, they don't feel sticky and I'm not leaving any fingerprints. Now I still have a lot to do to get the rest of my toys ready to be shown by Martian and Philly, but I think we're ready to reveal the finished shots of these two toys. Let's take a look. If you happen to dig these toys and want to own one, they're going to be on the Martian Toys website starting in June. Alright, I really enjoyed trying my hand at sculpting and painting on these little dudes. And for my next video to finish off the last of the toys, we're going to be painting itty bitty murals on itty bitty shipping container and two itty bitty brick walls. So you're going to want to stick around and see how I do it. If you enjoyed watching this, please consider subscribing belling, giving me a thumbs up, and sharing this with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching Cali Art.